Have you ever filed your VA disability claim thinking it was a non-starter? Have you ever filed your claim thinking, did I just sign up for six more months of disappointment? Well, stick around because today we're going to talk about what it takes to simply get your claim off the ground so you're not wasting your time. You don't know me yet. My name is Mark and I'm a disabled Army veteran. I have all the VA disability benefits that I feel I deserve and it took me seven years and about $100,000 of lost slash unrealized benefit. Made a lot of mistakes, learned a lot of things, and since then I've helped over 600 veterans get the VA disability benefits that they deserve, and it's my hope that I can help you as well. So today in the VA disability verse, what we're gonna talk about are the four things that you need before you step off and file your claim in order to give yourself the best chance at winning. You can think of this as a packing list. If your packing list isn't correct, then you're not going to get very far in this case. And this is applicable regardless of the method that you use, whether you're doing it on your own, whether you're using a VSO, whether you're using some type of service, doesn't matter. The first thing that you're going to need is a diagnosis. Probably heard this before, but you'll need a diagnosis for the condition that you are claiming. It's not enough that your records say you're dizzy, for example. If all your records say that you're dizzy but doesn't have a diagnosis for vertigo or Meniere's disease, for example, whether it was back in the day or presently, you're, you're probably rolling the dice and it's not going to go in your favor. So you actually need a diagnosis for the condition, not just the symptoms. So if you file a claim without that, you know, that, that's, you're taking a big risk because most times it's an automatic loss if you don't have a diagnosis. Secondly, in most claims, direct service claims, you're going to need documentation proving that you had some sort of event, injury, or condition that started in service, which is the cause of your disability today. So in the VA disability verse, this is what's often called a nexus. You're going to hear that term a lot on my channel, other channels, other people talking about this. Nexus simply means a link. What happened back in the day that's causing your condition today? You need a link to the past to prove that what you're dealing with today is service connected. That's how you can see this. This is the most important thing in a claim where you need to prove a service connection. So most commonly, Nexus documentation comes in the form of active duty medical evidence, but not always, depending on the claim. For example, if you're going for tinnitus, the Nexus is sometimes your MOS based on that tinnitus risk list. If your MOS is PTSD, then your story is the minimum requirement for a Nexus on that tinnitus. If it's a presumptive claim, now you have a diagnosis today, one back in the day isn't necessarily required. Now, just because you have Nexus documentation doesn't mean you automatically win, but the more of it you have, your chances go up exponentially. What victory is made of is Nexus documentation. This is what you need primarily. This is also the most confusing part of VA disability because oftentimes, many of you probably have this thought, let's take sleep apnea. This one's common. I've been going to the VA for 10 years for my sleep apnea. I have 10 years of documentation I've been going. It has to be service connected. It's not because a Nexus document is from back in the day most times, depending on your condition again. And so 10 years of VA medical evidence in that type of claim doesn't prove it happened in service. It just proves that you had it for the last 10 years. So logically, when you're looking at it from a nexus perspective, it's not going to fly. It's a non-starter. You need stuff from back in the service, or you need to change your strategy completely on that. It's not a total loss, but you might have to do something else. And that's a story for a different video. So I want to go to the third thing here. Number three, what you'll need is recent medical evidence that you still struggle with said disability that you're trying to claim. If you're going for something like back pain and it happened 20 years ago, and you stopped going to the hospital 15 years ago, if you're going to file a claim for back pain, you probably want something in the present day before you submit that claim. It's just my opinion. Other people might say different things, but I've seen, and this has happened to me, win a claim at a big fat 0% when I know that the rating scale goes higher and I qualify. Sometimes it's because there's no 
evidence today that your condition is bad or worse or whatever the VA rates at the next compensable level, let's say. So you need more recent medical evidence, especially if it's been more than a year. Which leads me to item number four on this list. Let's take the example I just gave with the back pain 20 years ago. If you stopped going 15 years ago, now you have a 15 year gap between the last hospital visit and today. So you got to think of it this way. If you submit that claim and you have a 15 year gap in your story, what's stopping the VA rater from saying something like, oh, I see here that Mark had a back problem in service. He was going to the hospital for it for five years and then he stopped until year 20. So after year five of going to the hospital, Mark's back problem magically resolved and then something else happened to him and that's why he's going for his claim today. So they're going to deem it not service connected because something else happened in their eyes. And I'm not making that up. That actually happened to me, but after year four. If it could happen to me after year four, it can happen to you. Some of you, it's going to be quite some work to get this evidence together, but it's better than waiting six months and getting denied. So again, those are the four things that you need. It's going to be a diagnosis. It's going to be the nexus documentation, depending on the type of claim you're going for. It's going to be recent medical evidence, and finally, the continuity of care. That's what I'll call it, continuity of care. So if you're thinking about filing a claim, regardless of the method you're using, these four things are the sensitive items in your packing list. You cannot leave without them. It doesn't mean you'll win if you have these things, but you'll certainly lose if you don't have them, if that makes sense. Yeah, hopefully you got something from this video. This is pretty common knowledge by now. A lot of other channels talk about it but I hope that you learned something new here or I communicated this in a way that connects with you. So if you found this video informative and helpful, please help me by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And stay tuned because I'm going to make more of these. And with that, this is Mark signing off.